Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. It's funny seeing my thing from <laughs> all I see is Europe's eyes watching it. I can't even see my own intro. So <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> oh, this is great. Well, welcome to another episode of From the Bottom Up. I've been uh, really inspired this last week watching these shows like um, Could It Be a Miracle, it's called, and they're from 1997. And there's another one on this other series. And it's called It Could Be a Miracle. And kind of like Kindness Diaries is an awareness right now where you just see this guy going on the road and sharing all that's happening. And it's really live. One of the ones that I saw was this. I've told this like twice here in this, uh, this house, but this trucker was driving along and trying to make his long haul. And he wanted to get extra money, so he was going quick. But over the CB radio, this message came, please help me, I'm stuck. I feel like something's wrong with my heart. So the guy had to give up his bonus. He pulled off, found the directions where the guy was on the side of the road, and he was having a heart attack. So he called an ambulance. The ambulance came, saved him. But then the police came up to him and said, you're pulling our leg, man, because the guy has no CB radio in his car. There's no way he called for you for help. And the guy was unconscious. So it was like somehow the angels or something spoke through the radio or his own mind pulled it forth. But that's not the real surprise. Then 20 years go by and um, he, the guy, the trucker, was, was, uh, was driving along and he not driving along, he'd retired for 20 years and he was doing a hike in the middle of nowhere and he got a heart attack. And his buddies had to walk him a mile to this native reservation where they only had a nurse and she wasn't an expert on cardio stuff. But lo and behold, on the door knocks this guy. The guy who's having a heart attack goes unconscious. The guy who knocks on the door is a cardiologist, helps him recover. And then the next morning when the patient awakens. The cardiologist was the guy that that guy had saved 20 years ago on the road. He was a cardiologist. So it was like they helped each other with these heart attacks. And it just like blows my mind to see that I just see it as God or the Spirit working to show that things are not what they seem. And that there's like this much greater plan happening. And so I thought I need to do this. I either need to go on the road or I need to interview the community for these kinds of miracles. So I shared this with David the other day and We've just been in prayer, and and so I called Francis and Kirsten, and they're they're not able to now, but they're going to do an interview with me this week, maybe for another show. I called Ricky, and um, I've recorded an eight-minute segment that I'm going to play for you guys here in a second. And then I thought it was going to be a short show, but I've been surprised because uh, all of Europe is going to join us and share some miracles after <laughs> after Ricky. And, since the only people I know over there are in that room, that's all of Europe to me. <laughs> but um, before we start that, I thought I could just read a short prayer. And this is another miracle because I was like looking through all this ladder of prayer and uh, the forgiveness section, and I wanted to read so much of it. And I just kept hearing, read a short section. And then Andy and Ken basically go on to read and talk about those sections and even play a video of David. So I just get to read the section that they didn't cover. Prayer is the greatest gift with which God blessed his son at his creation. It was then what it is to become. The single voice creator and creation share. The song the son sings to the father who returns the thanks it offers him unto the Son. Endless the harmony and endless too, the joyous concord of the love they give forever to each other, and in this creation is extended. God gives thanks to his extension in his Son. His Son gives thanks for his creation in the song of his creating in his Father's name. The love they share is what all prayer will be throughout eternity, when time is done. For such it was before time seemed to be. So, some of you have been seeing my last episodes and they're about letting go of control. And, and yeah, I just really felt like this week it just, it needed to focus more on 
on the means for moving through that control because we can understand the dynamics and express and and get in touch, but it's really in the, the true service, which is the theme of the next online retreat. True service, fully looking at the mind and letting the body be used in reflection of that. That is the way, and I was blessed because I called Ricky yesterday just spontaneously to see if she would join me, and she was in the middle of recording a fresh, brand new song, and so I I think I was the first or second person to hear it, and maybe now everybody over there has, but. I think we can play that now, a song from Ricky Fresh and a three-minute talk from her and I, and then we'll come back to me. Try to be something I'm 
I sent it to him last night when it was all over the place. And I was just about to record it when you called. So, <laughs> so where did it, where did it come from again? What was the you, you told me, but it was really quick. Right. Well, I guess it came from just a series. Um, being on the road. Oh, it's. I think this song has come from about a year of feeling, but <laughs> um, just I feel like um, I think about a week. Week and a half ago, I felt like my whole past just dropped. Like it was behind me. Um, so it started on the road in um, in Florida, and uh, yeah, it was so intense on the road with Micah. And I thought, wow, I have just made a mistake. And we both did. Um, I had a couple of counseling calls with, with Kirsten actually, and um, just for help. <laughs> and she was very helpful, but. But she was really more just saying, you know, relax and let Micah be Micah and let Ricky be Ricky. And I was like, how the, how is this going to work? So the retreats, the, the retreat in Canada, 30 people, and Sarah had a mystical experience, and she, and my session with her changed my life. And um, then we went back to back to Portugal, didn't adjust to the time zone at all, and I had that the retreat that night, and I was so excited that I just dived right in three sessions a day and didn't even care that I didn't sleep. And by the last day of the retreat, I like totally crashed, but I made it to my last session. And then when I got to Micah's in Holland, I crashed again and um, just got sick. But I called David or David called me and we, we decided that it would be, they needed help in Spain and I really felt it. And the minute I made the decision to go, I, I got better and I had another huge healing. And Micah and I were able to find our sweet spot and yeah and I felt like my whole past had just in that moment just fell away and I just wanted to come here and be in service and mm -hmm. literally it's been so joyful and I I told David oh I was going to write songs and Jan was going to record in Portugal before I went back to the U.S. and he goes well bring your guitar you'll have your own casita and so I'm just usually here they, I can't fit in the car anyway and they have deliveries all day so I'm just here holding down the fort putting things together when I can't. I broke something today trying to put it together, but it's been great. Um, you know, whatever. It's just been, it, I just felt it in my heart. I really, what happened was David was telling me what it was like and Emily was too. And I just, my heart went out. I want to come and help Emily. That's, she didn't have time to water the plants. And I was like, I can do that. I, let me just come and do whatever you can't do, Emily. And that's what I felt in my heart. And you know, there's so much more I'm able to do. So um, they're just, yeah, it just feels great. Uh, that's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, thank you, Ricky. And let's go live now to Frank, Ricky, David, Lisa, and Emily. I'm so glad you guys get to join me. And I heard you watched Mary Magdalene today. 
and you had an experience with the lamb. So, yeah, welcome. Thank Hi, you. <laughs> Hi from Spain. <laughs> yeah, we are beaming from Spain. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting because we've been in such a swirl and all of a sudden, boom, here we are. Uh, being able to share the miracles, just what's been happening because we've been, I mean, every day has just been so cool and yeah. alive. It's been a lot of mirroring. Like we were watching Mary Magdala and there were all these lambs on there. And uh, yeah, Frank was mentioning lamb, lamb of God. It's Palm Sunday. And then uh, I was, I think I was upstairs and I heard Lisa going oh the lambs there's lambs outside they're here in the driveway they're they're like here a big herd right outside the door i'm like what are you kidding me <laughs> but i think we had left the gate open uh for all these deliveries and because we're not we don't have animals although i said frank was saying we should have animals he wanted some animals down there and and actually when i was took a walk a little while ago they were grazing and the one place where we needed uh the lawn mowed as we was our orchard and the grass was growing high there and it's like uh, 20 euros per hour and taking days and Emily was saying she pushed off the gardener from me doing it and now they're all down there uh, it looks totally clean growing and fertilizing the whole they're, they're doing the work that we have. so it's like all of our thoughts are coming together it's really cool <laughs> Good use of funds too. <laughs> yeah. And Mary Magdalene, it was we all just the, the Kleenex box was out. I saw the tissues <laughs> flying over there on the couch because it was it's very profound reminding us, you know, that the, the kingdom of heaven is within and uh, that we're not looking to try to see changes in the world, but um, but we do feel the swirl. I think uh, Ricky came down from Holland and then we have Frank just recently got here and now it's all, almost time for you to go back but it's been like a, a squirrel yeah, yeah like a tuesday yeah, yeah. it was <laughs> i'm kind of exhausted <laughs> <laughs> we just furnished the whole thing for four days <laughs> yeah i've never seen so many things come in yeah, yeah. It, it's so fast and and i mean we have we were out late last night i think we were out in in the evening uh, driving around, uh, what was it? Actually, last night was the first night we got home early. It was like nine. Yeah. But we've had midnight days and yeah, yeah. But it was dark yeah. when we got home. Yeah, yeah. So it's been it's been good. Though. It just feels like so much love, and it feels like we're just it's like in service, like that true service. And we know there's other people coming that will be coming here, and uh, it's you know. For most of us, I mean, Emily's going to be here watching the people come and go. But for us, you know, we're all here and then we'll be gone and the next wave will come in uh, this summer. So it's it's really beautiful. And really, it's an answer to Emily's call for, for some help. You wanted to help. Yeah, this is like the best team ever. <laughs> <laughs> we really needed help here. So it's like every week somebody else has come and... I think I had no idea how big this project was going to be, but we're literally like every moment, even last yesterday we were we were going out to I can't even remember yesterday at this point. We were going out to buy something and burger more. Yeah, we were, oh, we were going to buy a shed because we have nowhere to store anything. And David's out taking the laundry down from the line just as we're getting in the cars. And David's like, we can't waste a minute. We're good. I'm not going to yeah. let this yeah, Frank's, go by. Frank's walking up. I'm pulling laundry down. <laughs> so we're all right like, taking down the laundry. And it's literally like that. Like every minute is so precise because every day there's so much coming in. It's nearly like of all the priorities, what are the priorities for today? And we're just being shown step by step. So it's, it's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. It's so much thought too, because at the beginning, it was like we we knew we were going to be buying stuff, hauling stuff, moving stuff, and we have a, basically a Volkswagen SUV that seats maybe five people max, and it has a little space in the back. And then we're like, that's not going to be enough. And then let's go see Kina. So we go down to Kina, we go into her office, and she's sitting there. And parked outside of her office is this big orange. That's what the color I wear a lot. Big orange. Ford Ranger, 
I mean, not as big as double cab or whatever <laughs> out in California, but double cab, and it's a big thing with a with a lid thing on the back. And we walk in there, and and she's so happy. And so I'm like, uh, you know, could we borrow a vehicle? We, you know, we need. We've got so much to do. She said, sure, sure, go ahead, take it. And she's so happy to give it to us. And then we said, well, we need it for. A couple days. Couple days. We still got it. We she still never got came it. back a week ago. Yeah. yeah, and so we've been hauling stuff. I hopped um, into this big rig and it's a diesel and it's yeah. like yeah, we got. We are driving. Police is driving a big diesel now. And she pulled out all these pictures of other, you know, like real, like semis. If we wanted that, right? She was willing to help <laughs> us out. Kid, we're like, oh no, please. Because she's a construction yeah. business, so she'd even yeah, these everything. huge rigs, and I'm like, no, 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 just. Give us the truck. <laughs> so it's been, I mean, really, everything's been like, it's been full. We, every day we come back and like this massive load and then unloading and sorting out. And it's just been really fun, actually. Mm. Really, really fun. Mm. All having the same purpose together. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I didn't realize it was going to be so much we needed. <laughs> <laughs> it was. <laughs> It's just the odd stuff. Tomorrow we go again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and it feels like it's not for us. It feels like we're preparing. You know, like David said, we're only going to be here for three months. So we're preparing. It's like a tag team. Like the next team will do the next things that are happening here. But like even with Ricky, that Casita is a studio and, you know, just these new ideas and things that are, it's like it's just evolving in front of us. But we just have this part of setting everything up, making sure everything's ready to go. And Frank speaks a number of languages, including Spanish. So that's pulled us out of a lot of jams like you wouldn't believe. And then Kina has stepped in when, when Frank and Lisa had to go and Emily over to, to Ikea. Then Kina's like, oh, my, my horse is, is giving birth and in two hours, in one hour. but. She still took the time, even when uh, she had a little uh, pony being born, she took the time to go and translate for us at a, at a car dealership, which the guy didn't speak hardly any English. So if we wouldn't have been able to communicate just, just with our hands. We wouldn't have worked. And they were going back and forth like that Bill Murray movie, Lost in Translation. They go, <laughs> they go for like two minutes, this and this and this. And then she gives me like one line, you know, in English, and I'm like, really? That, <laughs> that all that? <laughs> Just, <laughs> I couldn't kind of have the Bill Murray look like, like strange. But we, it's good. It, you know, it's it all works out. Everything we seem to need is landed, and we're just thrilled. And then Palm Sunday, you know, I don't know. There's something about it. We're just feeling the presence of love and Jesus today. And and I was reminding everybody that Palm Sunday was the time when when he came uh, back, you know, to Jerusalem and they had a donkey for him to ride on and, and they were all excited. The crowd was cheering. These were like supporters and followers. Hosanna, Hosanna, glory to God in the highest. They were recognizing the, the Christ. Got... Emily was singing it to me this afternoon. Oh. <laughs> well, I was singing Oh, <laughs> Hosanna, she says hallelujah. They both start with an H. There's a song. <laughs> well, you told me there was a song. <laughs> so I, well, the, the, in the Lamb of God, I, I kept thinking of Handel's Messiah today. I don't know why it was so yeah. strongly in my mind, but uh, the Lamb of God and all of the lyrics and that are so beautiful. And then, yeah, it just ends with the hallelujah chorus. Yeah, yes. hearing your voice echo through the house. <laughs> right, really it's a singing day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's lots of, it is deep. And Lisa, you were playing that that uh, track. Yeah, this but morning. you didn't know it was a. No, you told me you translated yeah, it was a Gregorian it was a track, but, uh, I mean, chant this morning. Mm -hmm. That I was in my room just with all my candles, just taking my God time. And Frank comes in and he's like, "Oh my word!" And it just started out all about lambs and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it started out a day. And then they came to the door. Right. Yeah. <laughs> they were out there. Ah. <laughs> like, oh my God. You have a powerful mind, Frank. <laughs> That's what David keeps telling me. <laughs> 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 like, holy moly. <laughs> 
What did you say, Frank? You hear it's what? What? Because uh, we, we were saying to, to, um, to Frank that he has a powerful mind, and he goes, I think that's a compliment. <laughs> he said, you know, he's saying that. Oh, we should have animals here. And then he's saying there's a lot of lambs at the door. A whole herd. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're like St. Francis. We're, we're with all the, the creatures, the many creatures. Yeah. Yeah, and the story you were telling, you know, how, how we got here even to you know, all these past stories about Mallorca mm -hmm. and things went wrong, but now they, they're in, you know, mm -hmm. in our advantage. Yeah, we were talking, you know, how they stay out of the, the soil and uh, it the, comes, emerges the fruit. And, uh, and it's been kind of interesting to me because uh, in Mexico, uh, the first time I went, I would always go down to, to Puerto Vallarta to just sit by the ocean and meditate and pray almost all the time. And then uh, I went down to Guadalajara to this purple uh, high-rise hotel and uh, Suzanne and Francis and I did this retreat and the man who was the organizer was supposed to set up two, two retreats. And he went, oh, I forgot, completely forgot about the second one. Well, that messed the finances up. So he said, well, let's, let's go up to Ajijic. We went to Ajijic, stayed with a a minister, and then we, they sat down to split the losses because it lost so much money, that particular one. And then out of all that grew the whole Mexican community. And the same thing happened here in Mallorca where a couple people <coughs> were supposed to be handling the finances, handling the venue. The finances got all locked up in a PayPal account down in Australia, and the venue, the man kept raising, raising, raising the prices beyond our affordability and then the whole thing crashed and then Je I talked to Jenny and Jenny and I kind of pulled it out and started the whole thing over and it was a beautiful six weeks in which we met the family over here and maybe Frank can tell the story because some of you may have heard it but the miracle was that this family that pulled us out and saved the day uh, with their villa to, it was like 2010 uh, nine years ago, and then uh, Lisa and Frank were there, and Frank was having a discussion with the, the, with the matriarch of the whole family. Yeah. yeah, and we didn't even want to come to this house because it was complicated. It wasn't exactly, you know, there she was She wasn't a, yeah, she, she making was, an appointment. She wasn't, yeah. And we and had so an we offer. Said, okay, well, wasn't there an offer perfect. on it already? And there was an, yes. yeah, because there was an offer. There was a so we weren't offer. even really interested. We didn't have no other houses said, to see so, that day. Yeah, was what happened was we didn't have any other houses to see. We had a big let list the next day, seven houses. And she made it clear she doesn't want to waste her time. So we, I mean, I my ego got in there a little bit. I said, come on, let's just go. We were never that, that part of the island before. Let's just have a day and go check out this place. And I wasn't expecting her at all. And here she's with a truck and horses. So we start talking about horses. And, you know, immediately she said, well, I want you, because I told her what I do with the horses and then, you know, we said we're a spiritual community. You, I, we want you, you know, and um, and said, don't worry about this other German offer. They won't get it. So, and then and then she took us to her mother. She place. said, I wanted you to meet my family first. Yeah. So the mother made us, gave us lunch and stuff. And, you know, it was. We were uh, the joy. We were in this bursting joy there and jumping around. And then she, she, uh, <laughs> you know, and, then, and then you, you left the table. And the mother asks me in Spanish, so what do we do? And I explained to her. And then, and then you came back to the table with Kina. And she says, you know, Kina, what he says reminds me of David, David Hoff, Hoff, Hoffmeister. Hoffmeister. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> I mean, out of, <laughs> this. It's a big, not huge, but it's big, you know, the chances of that. And um, and then we, but in the meantime, you had, we had talked to you because we showed yeah. you the thing, but she couldn't see you because the glare. Yeah. yeah. So then we called you back and I said, David, do you recognize this place? Wow, this is where I gave my retreat before. Yeah. So, I mean, what a. They were at the very place where I gave the retreat out of this whole year. Yeah. Your mama's house was. Yeah. It's really yeah. a goose bump story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, it, and yeah. actually that, you know, we did. We were all around uh, southern 
uh, Portugal, what's it was called Algarve. We were yeah. down there and, and we were around that whole area looking for a center over here. And then uh, one property fell through, then another one fell through very obviously. And then we were all just sitting there. What are we feeling? And everybody felt Mallorca. We felt mm. like we need to go to Mallorca. And I thought, here comes Mallorca again. I've been here so many times and then then all this unfolded. So so it feels like it's that scripted thing, like we're just, we're in the joy, we're all in the joy and the synergy and the miracle. And then every day things are showing up and we're laughing and we're just sharing so much. And, and, uh, and even the people that are showing up, uh, it's been a lot of miracles, Ricky, because you said the guy delivering the TV, he didn't speak any English and you were making sure he, he got it from into Spanish so he could install it yeah. and then try to get it back. And it always works out. Each yeah, well, I had to call Frank. <laughs> I called <laughs> you guys, but I was using Google Translate with the phone and he's speaking into it and, and all that. And then literally he was getting to leave and I said, no, 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 back to English. And he was like, oh, he was so frustrated, so frustrated. And so I called you guys and Emily goes, would it help? If Frank got on the phone and spoke English, I'm like, oh my God, yes. So, yeah. yeah. So we got our TV set up today and we watched Mary Magdala. Mary Magdala. And you know, it was funny, Lisa and I were talking a while back and she's like, you know, this is a really a big property. And and at that point we didn't have cell phones. That came in, another miracle. Oh, yeah. But we were like, I, at one time, uh, the papa was showing up with this new guy and I, I'm calling Emily on Skype and WhatsApp. She's not answering, but she could, could hear me I couldn't hear her we had talked about walkie-talkies so anyway we were out and lo and behold they come back at least look look like I got this walkie-talkies two walkie-talkies so I they're unpacking the truck I open them up I charge them for 12 hours you know set up the walkie-talkies and then I just leave them in their little holsters down there and then today I called Ricky up and I said why don't you come over and some of you may have even seen we did a live stream right out on the, the patio and we're out there doing a live stream and maybe you can tell what happened. You were downstairs and suddenly these walkie talkies, what happened? <laughs> well, yeah, I was setting up the movie downstairs and I was trying to be really quiet. Like I didn't want to turn anything on in case it made a huge noise and doing the live stream. And next thing, the walkie talkies start like activating themselves. So I'm trying to quiet them down, but actually, it was Ricky singing into the kingdom coming through the walkie talkie because it picks the walkie talkie sometimes pick up like sometimes you'll hear like Spanish people speaking or something like whatever waves it goes through. Yeah. But for the words into the kingdom, it was like it picked it up and started coming through the walkie talkie. While we were live streaming up here, I know, yeah. upstairs, the walkie talkies pick it up and they're downstairs. they're downstairs. And then I picked them up. I'm like, well, you know, you have to look at the channel and it's like channel one. So they're on channel one broadcasting into, into the, the kingdom. kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just, you know, it's a lot of symbols around us. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. That is cool. All of Europe sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> if you've got any questions for all of Europe, we're here. Well, I do have this one question It came to me even before the interview, like Frank, it just keeps coming to me. Like, how, how are you expanding with this adventure? Because <laughs> I can hear the noise of the expansion. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's, uh, it's very different than, I can see the change. That's the, the thing, I can really see a change. From, from even our Portugal trip. I think, Lisa, you can see it too, right? Definitely. Yeah, yeah. It's a much more, you know, uh, going with the flow. Before I had a lot of, uh, I just learned that. <laughs> was, mm. You know, to not have so many attachments. I'm sure I still have a lot of them, but it's, it's a lot easier for me now. Mm. Yeah. The first trip you were, you were kind of, everyone was kind of following with the houses that you were liking and all this kind of stuff. And then now you're kind of... No, I mean, I liked some houses and they were, they were out right away. And then we had, uh, and then, and then they, they, some houses came up that I would have never picked. And I had a lot of uh, contractions about it. And there was one that was, um, you know, the last one, 
<laughs> and I was always trying to convince David that this is not the house because it was noisy. And I said, "You hear that noise?" And he said, "No, but that's okay." <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> and then, and then it was cold because it was facing north. But in a way, it was good for me because I did, um, I, I did, I, I did let go. You know, I did let go. I said, "Okay, then this is going to be it." And then it didn't come through because they wanted more money. I mean, they completely reneged the whole deal they did with us. And that's when that night we went to the restaurant and we said, okay, now we've been here for weeks and nothing happened. And so Mallorca came up and then everybody whipped out their phones. And uh, we said, okay, <laughs> oh, there's some properties. That's when that beautiful world came in and you know all that. But now, you know, just uh, letting go of the whole thing, I realized now this is exactly what I was talking about. You know, I said, I want, I, I, when I had envisioned a place in, in Europe, this is the kind of place, you know, with the sheep and coming up the driveway and this whole thing. And it's, it's like, I mean, we, we just watched Mary Magdalene. It could have been shot right here, right? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's that whole vibe and I knew we would love it. And, and, um, and in Portugal, the places where we had that were way too remote. So now we have it. And I, for me, it was a big lesson. Just let go and it will come in, you know. And so now it's very different. You know, the, expand, the expanding. I'm, I, I was expanding also. I see, you know, I remember when we, <laughs> when we did your studio that I see there. Yeah, and, there's Jesus back there, yeah. both hands up. <laughs> and there was one prop that I... <laughs> and the rest. There it is. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> So I said, okay, one plus. But before I would have tried to force it, you know, and uh, and now I think that's that's gone. And so I mean, not completely, but it's a lot easier. Mm -hmm. I don't have to carry that much weight on my shoulders anymore. Mm. It's beautiful. Yeah, it is yeah, beautiful. Yeah. And you know, like we, with our big shops. I mean, we went to IKEA the other day. We had five shopping carts. And it's really good. And a delivery, and just like us all being together, just it's all about purpose too. We're in full communication along the way, just and we even praying before. I, it makes me emotional. It's like before we went up the escalator, we did our lesson, oh, and really invite. You know, we stood there and did our lesson, and then it was like inviting the Holy Spirit in, and that day was really miraculous. The, the, immediately we went up there, we met some lady named Lisa. You know, it's like one thing after the other. The guys pack in the car, and then I ran my cart into a bunch of dishes. And they all crashed, and it was funny. And I'm standing there, I'm like, "Oh my word, what do I do?" All these dishes crashed, and and I burst out laughing. And all these European people were like, "Like, what's going to happen?" I'm like, "I have no idea what to do." And all of a sudden, this lady comes around, and she's like, "I got it," and I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> And then I was like, so what do I need to do? And she said, nothing. And I don't know, it just feels very deep for me, too. I feel, feels very mystical at the end of the day. It feels very purposeful and very expansive. And, you know, even just what you were saying, Frank, just seeing the expansion even with all of us together. Yeah. I mean, it's like a, it's a new constellation that's together and us all coming together with this purpose. And, you know, and... It just feels really deep. I was I was talking to you last night about it, Jason. You know, just really, it feels like really some kind of mystical thing. Like it's it's the happy dream for sure, but it's so like such a linking together and staying so linked together in such a fast pace. It's so fast paced. So like the, the only thing is just staying in the purpose. It's living in the miracle. In this real beautiful, it feels so deep. Like I feel so present with God, and and that the like the times that are quiet are just so precious too. Like they really are like enough to restore my soul, you know. Like and then the car will be quiet and like restoring, and then into the moment and such a high energy and just this place is so beautiful. It feels such an honor, yeah. really. I mean, it's. The most beautiful place that we've seen yeah, yeah, really you know and we got it in the relationship with kina and it just it's like it's cascading yeah. and things are dropping in like like there are more right now it's a smaller configuration but 
I think Rudy and Jesse are, are driving across. Next week, in they'll the motor be here. Home, they're coming, and, and we were out looking at the shed. Oh, yeah, Rudy can could do that, and the Hooser Bird will be here, and Tony. And so it's, Tonio, it's, it's actually, there's a synergy of people coming, 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 and they're coming all to be used and all in whatever way that is. It's not a particular thing, but everybody is being used <clears throat> in, whether it's construction, whether it's, you know, helping out with cleaning, cooking. Even today, Frank and I had a, a video chat with my friend Fabienne Lison, who also speaks French. She slept. She said, you know, I'm like a professional tourist. I just, I love to go around. I love to see sights and, and see different places and this and this. And Frank's like, yeah, okay, I can totally relate to that, you know, even... He's looking for a she travel even, buddy. She even <laughs> speaks French, and... And I take, you know, I'll take her around, and, and, and then I, when David told me yesterday, I said, I love community. <laughs> <laughs> because it's when the, wind, when the winds come in, but, but it's the flexibility, it's not just always being here, it's even going who shows up and, and going out, and... So it's really starting to trust that if I give my life over to guidance, mm. that I'll have a joyful, adventurous, mm. peaceful life. Mm. Uh, it will be given to me, not because of my past learning or striving for things, but, but it will just like come raining down on me uh, just because I've given my life over to, to be happy, to serve God. And I think that's important. There's a lot of people that still have a lot of little sacrificial ideas about serving God, you know, like, oh my God, it's what's, where, what's my life going to be? Like Ricky and I, we were down, we did that uh, show right before you went on your tour and, and you went to see that, yeah. you had seen a, a psychic or had a reading where they said the next, how many years ago? Seven. Your next seven years will be completely different from your past seven, seven. years. And so, and wow, it's like shooting out of a cannon. It's been so different, but it's also been very full. Yeah, there's just been a lot of deep healing and mind training. And and now it's just like David was saying, there is no sacrifice. When I first got here, I just joined with Emily and I just said, man, I'm just, I'm just blown away how grateful I am for my life. And um, it, it's just I've gotten everything I ever wanted. And I actually didn't even know how to accept that. So it's like, it's like Lisa said, it, um, when we have this rest time or this downtime, it feels like extra, extra deep and extra, extra quiet and extra, extra intense almost. It's like all this service. We're in the joy all the time. Mm. There's so much joy. And yet when there's downtime, we're, it's so used as well. Like all oh, the songs are coming through and I have a casita that has like a built-in microphone from <laughs> heaven. You know, I'm just, I'm just, I, and then I can't even go to sleep because, you know, I'm singing and recording and the, and yet, I, I haven't slept eight hours in, I, can't, I don't even know how long until I got here. So there's I, everything. I'm just so grateful for every little piece. Um, and that, that idea of sacrifice has, has been watched. And, and that's why that new song came yeah. through. It's like, holy. Yeah, just, a culmination of all that healing. Yeah, and even if a thought comes in, it's like, wow, that's not it anymore. And it goes away. And then there's just love that shows up because that's what, that's the end that's the final outcome. Like if it's not happy, it ain't over yet. It's not the <laughs> end because it's, it ends in joy. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty cool. That reminds me of that, uh, remember that uh, Frank Sinatra song from years ago, Young at Heart. Uh, there's a line in there I just like so much, but, and love is, e is either in your heart or on its way. It's, it's like, yeah. how can you not love that? Because it's either in your heart or on its softly or on its way. You know, it's like, ah, oh, it's so embracing. It's so deep. There's so much love. And, and that's what we're here for. We're here about living this. You know, mm. it's, we, we know we've gone through periods of reading and exploring and studying. All of us have really searched and searched and searched. And now it's like getting into this rhythm where it's like really embracing the guidance, going for it and trusting fully in it. And then being convinced, joyful that is, mm. to be spirit-led instead of just trying to make decisions based on past learning, past preferences. You know, it's that's more of like the Groundhog Day. Just you don't 
you feel like you're looping and it gets kind of ritualistic. But when you're spirit led, it's like you wake up, okay, brand new day. And it's been full. We've been going from morning to night. When we have a break, you know, everybody's like, whew, downtime. <laughs> it's like we, we really are ready for that break. I saw Frank was out doing a little sunbathing <laughs> today out there by the pool after a full on like four or five street days of go, yeah. go, 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 go. It's like rest. Yeah. On, and Sunday they all rested. <laughs> that was for me a, a little bit hard now too because you know, I had my routine with my lessons and my meditations and I'm, you know, now we're in the lessons where you, every five, every hour you get five minutes and I, you know, I haven't been able at all to do that because it was just too crazy. But, you know, but there was one thing I just came to mind, you know, what I had, a, what I still struggle with and, and we had a, a, a story, can I tell the, the truck story? <laughs> so, um, oh had, no. <laughs> <laughs> Me and him always have these vehicle stories. <laughs> So we had, you know, we have this truck and I, and that's what I, you know, with the horses. So I'm used to that in the dirt roads and, and, and so the, I know mine comes in. And, and so we had to back into this thing. And I said, um, you know, but there was already totally locked. Okay. I know exactly what I'm doing. And I got out because we backed into between these two stone walls that they have here everywhere. And, um, and then Lisa didn't wait for me, and she she hit the the, the wall, and and uh, and then that uh, you know that came in really strong, and I was so. What was interesting was that I got out of the car, I got out of the truck, and then this happened, and I went, "Oh my God, why didn't they listen to me? you know?" And and then she had to drive on and pick up what she had to pick up. So I was left by myself on this little country road, which was good because I was able to pray. You know, so this happened for a reason. You said, no, wow, how did this happen? You know, I was there, I could have avoided it. And then I prayed, I said, this happened for a reason. And so by the time they came back to pick me up on their way down, um, Emily talked me through it, you know, because I was so convinced that I was right, you know, and you should have listened to me. But I have to say, it wasn't as sticky as it would have been, because mm. I could have, you know. So I, I was able, if I can throw myself a little compliment here, I was able to let go in. <laughs> I was grateful Emily was in the car. We had the whole drive to Ikea to process. So I think oh, by the time God. we got to Ikea, it was, it was, all, it was all clear to have. It was good to be. Even, after, even already at the restaurant. I said, you know, I'm not, not, it's just, I have the feelings, I need to share them, but I'm not, um, you know, I'm, I'm willing to learn from it. But it was hard, so that was like, there I could hear my mind stretch, because I still, when I think about it, I think, you know, oh, why did this happen? Because I see, I see this, this scratch in the car, and um, in the truck. But anyway, so that was a big mind stretch. This one was a big one for me. What did, so you <laughs> what did you say to him, Emily? What was it? Mm. Oh, yeah, go. Oh, my <laughs> word. Well, we had a few hours. <laughs> yeah. um, I, think, I think it came down to, yeah, wanting to be right or yeah, wanting to be happy right. because, yeah, it's like the form. You can never use the form to tell you who you are or to mm. because it's still in the realm of right and wrong and good and bad and it has to come back are you willing to forgive and that has to be yeah. in prayer right and the thing was uh let me emily was going to go with Svava and i back to the house and then she walked in she and she said i think i'm needed on this trip and then later on lisa was like we would not have made it. We would not have been able to make it through the whole sh shop at Ikea and all the no aspects way. of it for many hours without that because I, the mindset is so important. You have to have that, that sense of healing and harmony out front. Otherwise, a five or six, seven hour shopping trip can turn into a, a trip from hell. Yeah, yeah. It just gets worse and worse, you know, and, and we know how that can go. So that's, again, why the guidance is so important. It was a, a last-minute reconfiguration, and then the healing came pouring through that reconfiguration. And then we, that's when Kenis, I said, well, we'll go to the car dealership, but we don't have a translator. Kenis like, well, my horse is, is I'm giving birth in one hour, but 
I'll come. And so even though she's, her horse is getting born, she's been waiting and so excited. She doesn't have children of her own. This is like her, her new baby coming. She went and patiently uh, did all the translating and then hugs and kisses in the parking lot. And the guy was all lit up. We'd never met the stealer. So, it, you know, how it, it blesses everyone. Mm. But it's like we're not under control of the form of how it's supposed to go. We just have to remain very open and flexible, you know, for it to work. And, yeah. and we all did. And like the script is written because like it was so perfect. We had such a joyful trip on a key. I think it was like midnight when we got back or something. It was like one of our big days, but it was like the three of us were supposed to be there. So whatever way it all was orchestrated, it was like, yeah, everybody's parts essential. And it's so precise every day as our day is given to us who's doing what and yeah it's just beautiful to see it all unfold and the miracles like the support coming in every day we have so many miracles whether it's Kina giving us her car or just you know people coming up speaking English just when you need it or helping us load the car like whatever it is it's like it's God's plan so the means are given and you you know that you're in the direction when that support comes in and there's just a flow so yeah, it's been really yeah. beautiful. It feels very natural. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of laughter too. I, I was thinking we were just out yesterday and then we, the credit card wasn't going through and then it ended up, we all were lined up there, a whole row of us at customer yeah. service and, and the guy who'd been working with, he was laughing, they were laughing. There's laughter, there's smiles, whether it's at a like Home Depot type, type of store, car dealership, restaurants, I mean, you can just tell that the spirit is behind it by all the laughter. Even this uh, guy, we went into this other dealership and, and uh, yeah. we're like, oh, there's only like seven minutes until they close at one o'clock in the afternoon for the siestas. <laughs> so we roll in there and we just all go streaming in, you know, he's ready to take off for his siesta. And, and we all stream in there and he's just looking at us and we ended up, he just had the biggest smile on his face, and and he'd say five minutes, two minutes, you know, and and almost like he could care less about making the sale. But he always had a big grin on his face with whatever he was doing, and that's the thing I notice. You know, when you're in the joy, it's contagious. Everybody's smiling and laughing. Like, is this for real? Like, is this are these people for real? Is this really happening? Kind of feel. It seems very surreal. And then it just goes on and on, you know, like... A, yeah, just people showing up with exactly what you need at the moment. You know, mm, it's yeah, it's yeah. really, I mean, there's so many little things, but it's beautiful to watch, you know. It, it, you know, it's, it's really, yeah, it's a demonstration. Mm. You know, no obstacles, all the obstacles. Like on that trust meditation, you know, you know I'll remove all the obstacles. And yeah, it's yeah. Just, uh, yeah. Yeah, and, and unpredictable too. You know, you can't base anything on the past. We we were all dry. We were in this store. We were so parched. We were all dry. Frank had to go out to his car. We go out. We go in there, and it's this free thing. Cool water. It's, we cool water. Let's get one five. No, no. Frank only drinks room temperature water. Put it back. <laughs> Do not buy it. So we go. We get the four bottles out there. Frank, I'm zooming up. Pulls up a chair, sits down, and oh, water! And they say it's cool. Oh, it doesn't matter. He <laughs> opens it up and starts going. Drink my water. Preferences are the. I know. We don't care. It's right now. It's like he's drinking the water. I'm like, hey, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> We still have to walk into McDonald's with us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but another thing, you know, we go in and finally find this Chinese restaurant. So we go in and we have all this great Chinese food and everything. And at the very end, they're like, and they call her over there and she comes over, she speaks Spanish. And they're like, fortune cookies, fortune cookies. And the woman's like, what? Like, and I said, <laughs> No, it's, it, it's, we get these cute little reminders, like the things you would expect, a fortune cookie in a Chinese restaurant, they just give it a look like, what is what? that? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> so we're like, okay, 
No fortune. We're, we're in Jupiter. We're, <laughs> we're in good fortune all the time, right? So we didn't need the fortune tickets. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. <laughs> My miracles are a little more internal right now. <laughs> I heard. <laughs> oh, listen to Frank. I heard. <laughs> no, it's a joke. It's a joke. <laughs> don't worry. I'm annoying. That's a tiny one, but I was meditating the other day and. Jesus said, now you're going to sink deep into your mind. You know, he, he literally writes that out in the lesson. And I've been doing this five-minute thing, and I thought, you know what? Either I'm trying hard to go in, or I can't figure it out. I have no idea how to do this. Mm. How to sink in. And then all of a sudden, something like really deep down, it, like, it was like this burst of something. And I was like, burst into tears. And I'm like, so that's it. I just have to not know. <laughs> Amen. And it's mm. like, like the truth is always trying to come to us. It's just, it's not, it's just what are the blocks, you know, and paying attention to that. And you guys are like, you're describing it in a much easier way to describe with all the things coming at you, you know, so easily. Yeah. 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 You don't have time to think, you know, <laughs> just like, it's like we're the, the rapids and it's like we're going down the rapids and nobody has time to think and uh you know and and we had a funny episode last night too where we go to the store it took us to get even we went at the wrong entrance and then back up and we finally got in had to go in we were solicited for um for a car wash uh oh, yeah. and like guys like Guys, come here. It's Lisa. Look, I can go right up here and park because we're looking for parking. It's right inside Pulled right the in. Door. All these people come up to wash our car. And like, we're all, like, we're all like, no, no. <laughs> we They're ready to jump on us. Apparently, the car was really dirty we and dusty. We get out the car and it's filthy. It's we're filthy. Like, and they're all like, like you on. really need it. And so we had to go find a place to park. We, image, we go in there. The place is packed. We go in there. We're walking all over to spend time in there. And, and then finally, we made a decision at some point that, that we weren't going to get a stove. David said, what happened to sandwiches? What happened to sandwiches? He said, we don't have Let's go green. No more cooking. Let's go green. We're going to go green. We're going to eat the oranges. Yeah. Forget and, the stove. I said, okay. And then, then the, the chorus chimed in. Emily said, I rarely use the stove. And then I looked at Frank and he said, the electricity is very high here for, for the microwaves and for the stove. And so at least like, we come all the way in here to get a stove and now we're not going to get a stove. And, and Sada said, that's why we came here to realize we didn't need, need a stove. And so that, that's the kind of way that we get. Right. Through all this, like really intricate to just realize, we finally came here to realize we didn't need you a just stove. Needed a car so, wash. <laughs> and we didn't, yeah. right, we didn't need a car wash because Emily's like, if we drive up the road, it's going to even, it's going to be just as dirty as we it got, was. But they let us know yeah. that we needed one. <laughs> we, yeah, we got a dirt track coming up to our gate. So literally one it's drive just, up, it's yeah. dirty again. So just leaving it to We didn't need a car wash. We had to convince them of that. Though. They were like, still like. I said, it's not dirty. <laughs> it's filthy. But we also realized we have this great uh, grill. Grill. Yeah. Yeah. You do. So there's going to be a lot of grilling. Outside kitchen is awesome. It's yeah, like yeah, a yeah. time grill. It's like it's really obvious because when we went in to get the oven, we had measurements of the oven that could fit. We had this tiny little thing. I think you could put an oven in there. And no ovens exist at that, at that size. I'm like, okay, it's fine. We're not supposed to get an oven. So it's like it's very obvious. <laughs> yeah. We just have our being shown. Everything has to be shown to us. We are like little children. Be except you become as little children, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. One, two, three, four, five. Little children. Five little ones and, and a whole bunch of lambs and a herd of lambs. 27? You can Oh, 12 I counted. And I'm on orange overload. I need like four a day. Oh, we look good. <laughs> yeah. so I mean, good. I remember in Spain last time when we had the house, we had to like eat them or they were going to go bad. So I'm on it. Mm -hmm. You're our orange <laughs> consumer. Lemons, yeah. The lemon, yeah. really nice lemons. Yeah. Yeah. I picked some today. 
<laughs> oh, that's beautiful. It's beautiful. So what you guys watched Mary Magdalene? Was there any? What was it that touched anybody who had the tears? I guess. Or? Well, it was Emily's first time, so there were lots of tears. Yeah, I think it was just her devotion and yeah, just the relationship with between her and Jesus. Like it was, you could just feel it was not personal. Like it was just this love that when they would come together, they would yeah feel it and yeah i just think it was her devotion that was really what well, touched me yeah. and at the very end you know again her coming to the upper room but that was such a beautiful contrast of of looking for changes in the world and looking for things to, to get better and all the things about you know that that scene right there in with the other apostles in, in the upper room, it was really, she was teaching 2,000 years ago, seek not to change the world, seek to change your mind about the world. She kept saying, we have to be the change, and, and, and it was an inner change, and all along she would hint at that, like, maybe we don't understand after they talk about, you know, the coming kingdom, and Jesus is just going to say the word, and he'll show everybody, and he'll demonstrate his power, and he'll sit in the throne and be the king. That was all the thinking, not only of, uh, of the apostles, but a lot of the Jewish tradition that a Messiah would come and would basically save the day for the Jews and turn the tables on the oppressors, maybe the Romans or whatever. And so that was very much a part of the belief system. And still to this day, 2,000 years later, when people are concerned about the environment, about politics, about all these things that are still very much on the news and very much in the forefront. It's the same lesson that Mary Magdala was experiencing for herself 2,000 years ago. For now, for all people in spirituality, Course in Miracles students, you know, it's, it's the prominent lesson about change. It's a perceptual problem and you have to simply change your mind. You have to change your purpose from one of hate to one of forgiveness. And and it just brings it home. I mean, I love that movie because it really brings it home. The whole movie kind of sets up that final scene in the upper room. It like really brings it home strong. Yeah, the expectations of Judas. Yeah. I could really relate to that. You know, when I got into metaphysics, I thought I was doing it for all these reasons, you know. And then, um, and then he just looks so disappointed. What? This is not going to happen. Mm. You know, that's yeah. when I found the course. So yeah. I could really relate to that. He hung himself. And, you know, yeah. so, because he couldn't, right. couldn't deal yeah. with it. Yeah. And when Mary went out and found Jesus after he had been crucified, he was just sitting there in a white robe looking out over the, the fields and she's went and sat right down next to him. And then they they began looking at each other and eye gazing. And then uh, he said, you asked me what, what the kingdom was like. And then mm -hmm. Jesus breaks into this big smile. And then Mary breaks into this big yeah. smile as they're just gazing. And it's like this point of recognition, like, yeah, here it is mm -hmm. because the whole world was interpreting, you know, different things about the kingdom of heaven. He was saying it's at hand, it's very close, but he was talking about a spiritual kingdom and which is way beyond the idea of, a, of an earthly or a linear timeline kingdom. And uh, it still touches me when I was watching that. It just came back to the present moment for me. Like it's not about, Anything that we say or do, it's not about our ministry or mm. spreading the word to different countries or preaching the gospel and all those things. It's simply about a recognition that it's it's a present moment experience and that it's everything. Mm. And it's a, it's an inner light. She was saying at the end, it's an inner mm. it's an inner kingdom. That's what the whole point was about. So of all the Jesus movies I've watched, and I've watched a lot of them. This was the movie that really drove it home through that upper room talk that she gave. Mm -hmm. They basically said, you know, that they took it as an insult that uh, Jesus would come to a woman first mm -hmm. and that 
why, where is he? he? He would appear to us. They basically were beside themselves that she was teaching them. And then she just finally said, I love you just like Jesus loved you and I'll always love you. And, and I need to say this, but I cannot be silent. And I was telling everybody that, that after her experience there with Jesus, she did come across the Mediterranean uh, to uh, near Marseille uh, in France, southern France, and she taught in a Greek uh, temple uh, for decades, for two or three decades, and then she went to live in a grotto, a cave, and commune with Jesus. And I've always felt that the life of Mary Magdala was like a, kind of like a, if you had to have in the dictionary like a, a picture perfect life of of going all the way first of all she's there with jesus she leaves her family she leaves all expectations about being a, a mother uh about being a wife uh she literally it takes a lot for her uh, basically her brother and a bunch of men almost drowned her uh until the father says stop and she's literally totally goes through a huge disillusionment and then it's the, bring the healer the father says yes to the healer the healer happens to be jesus and jesus comes in there so lighthearted, not like he's counseling a desperate woman um who's who's on the verge of of deep depression and death but basically he's still lighthearted as if he's talking to a friend casually you know so they say you have a demon you know she's like yeah i wish it was a demon and you know and she's got this kind of sarcastic thing and he's so right away so loving so joining with her and then then she goes through this whole experience with jesus while he's here when before when he resurrects she's there with him again smiling and they're smiling at each other like in recognition and then she eventually goes to to France and then to the cave and to commune uh, where a friar takes care of her, brings her food uh, every so often. But it just shows that's a life of, of like many, many decades, a full earth life that's just dedicated to finding the kingdom of heaven within, finding the light, meditating, being still, being perfectly okay after she taught at that, uh, Greek temple for all those years. She she spoke whatever she needed to speak, and then there came time to just be silent and commune with Jesus. And uh, so I just feel like uh, I was thinking we need a road trip to mm. to Toulon, mm. to, to Marseille, mm. uh, to 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 go up that route again. I did it once, but everyone was like, "Yeah, yeah, that would be a road trip." Mm. Is that in Mallorca or in? France. France, south of France, Marseille. Well, maybe that's a beautiful place to end it then with Seek Not to Change mm -hmm. Mary Magdala's life. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah, we're losing our life here. Mm, yeah. <laughs> our natural light through the yeah. windows is, is disappearing. <laughs> I'm so grateful you guys came. As soon as I started the show and I saw you all, it was like I could just feel this gratitude and love. So mm, I love you. Yeah, love you, Jason. Love you, Jason. So sweet. And all of you tuned in watching this whole day on on uh, Spirit TV. Very right, beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, thanks thank everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye everybody. Thanks for the running on from the bottom up. <laughs>